To learn, understand and appreciate a new language, we begin with alphabet, words, basic sentences, grammar and then advanced constructs of poetry and prose. In this course, we will be learning the languages of computational models. So, we shall begin the discussion with the basic mathematical objects, tools and notation we expect to use throughout the course. Let us begin with a set. A set is a group of unique elements represented as a unit. The formal way of representing members in a set is by encapsulating them in braces. This symbol implies that this element is a member of the set and that symbol implies it is not a member. For two sets A and B, we can say that A is a subset of B if every member in A is also a member of B. According to this definition, a set is a subset to itself. If A is a subset of B and not equal to B, A is called as proper subset of B and it's denoted that way. A set can contain infinite number of elements. Few everyday examples are natural numbers, rational numbers and real numbers. A set with zero number of elements is called as the empty set represented by phi. It denotes absolute void. Sets can interact with each other in multiple ways. You can combine two sets using the union operator. Let us see an example of a set union. When you combine these two sets using union operator, you might think the result would be this, but no. A set by definition contains unique elements. So A union B would be this. The intersection of A and B written as A intersection of B is the set of elements that are both in A and B. The complement of a set A is a bit tricky. You first have to be aware of the set space. In this example, if we consider natural numbers as the set space, then A complement would have the following elements. Basically, A complement is the set of all elements in the set space that are not in A. When diagrams help us visualize the set operations better, this portion of the diagram represents A intersection of B, that represents A union B, and this represents A complement, and that represents B complement. Sets are unordered. For instance, the two sets shown here are equivalent. If we like to impose order to the elements in a set, we resort to sequences and tuples. We designate the sequence by writing the list of elements in a parenthesis. This means these sequences are unique and different from each other. The sequences may be finite or infinite. Finite sequences like these are called as tuples a finite sequence with k elements is called a k-tuple. Now pay close attention to the concepts I'll be introducing to you in a bit. Let's discuss about a power set. If A is a set with elements 0 and 1, the power set of A consists of the sets empty set, set containing only 0, set containing only 1, and a set containing both 0 and 1. Let us evaluate the power set of a set containing three elements. By default, empty set is an element in the power set. Then we have the sets with single elements, and then we have sets with two elements, and finally the original set. The power set of a set with two elements has four sets. The power set of a set with three elements has eight sets. Hence, it is easy to prove that the power set of a set with n elements has 2 to the power n number of sets. Alright, the concept to be discussed now 
will show up several times across the course. Two sets A and B can interact with each other in an ordered way when we apply a Cartesian product or a cross product. The Cartesian product of A and B is performed this way. The procedure is simple. You start with one of the elements in A and one of the elements in B, create a ordered pair tuple and keep repeating the same over and over again. For two elements in A and three elements in B, you end up with six tuples. Now, Cartesian product is not symmetric. Like A cross B is not equal to B cross A in this case. The Cartesian product of K sets will result in the set consisting of all K tuples. Here is an example of Cartesian product of three sets. First, we can apply Cartesian product on two sets and then we end up with this set. We can use that to apply Cartesian product again with the third set and then we end up with a set full of three tuples. I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with function definition. A function is a mapping between elements between two sets. The set of possible inputs to the function is called its domain. The outputs of a function come from a set called its range. Here is the formal notation for saying that f is a function with domain d and range r. You have to note that the function may not necessarily use all the elements of the range and is said to be on to the range. Sometimes the domain of a function is a k tuple, where we call individual elements in the tuple as arguments. You might be familiar with the term arguments while writing functions in a programming language that you've learned already. Let's consider the example of add function. It takes in two arguments the domain is integers and the range is also integers. Well, let us move on to the last topic of mathematical terminology, graphs. This is an undirected graph. The elements labeled as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are called nodes or vertices and the lines connecting them are called edges. The number of edges at a particular node is the degree of that node. No more than one edge is allowed between any two nodes in an undirected graph. In special cases, a node may have an edge onto itself, which is called a self loop. Sometimes the edges are given labels, the graph is called a labeled graph. Just like a subset, we have a subgraph where a subset of the nodes and their corresponding edges are considered. A path in a graph is a sequence of vertices connected by edges. A simple path is a path that does not repeat any of its nodes. A path is called a cycle if it starts and ends in the same node. A graph is a tree if it is connected, yet does not contain any cycle. It consists of a root and it has leaves. Finally, a directed graph has arrows instead of lines. Hence, there is an out degree as well as in degree. If we were to write the formal description of this directed graph, we can write it this way. First, we list the vertices or nodes and then we list the edges as ordered pairs or tuples. Hope this gave you a good overview of the mathematical concepts. Uh, we're going to discuss proofs in the next lecture.